You're listening to A Quality Podcast with your hosts, John Thacker Jr. and Jake Harrell. So, Pearl Snap shirt, right? How mm-hmm. it started. Some cowboy got home from a hard day's work, all dirty, time to take a bath. He's all like trying to get undressed. He's like, why don't these motherfuckers put snaps on this shirt instead of butts? And that, that, that's how they invented the Pearl Snap shirt. Okay, that makes sense. Well, however they invented mine, I'm sure it was a tragic accident out of Sherman Williams. <laughs> yeah, some guy with a white t-shirt was walking through the paint factory and there was an explosion. <laughs> and he was like, uh, yeah, I can sell this. Uh, yeah, that'll work. Well, I mean, that's how bourbon got started. Like, for people that don't know the history of bourbon, you know, they were making hooch in uh, Kentucky. And this guy Something had... Something exploded? Uh, no, it was a fire, though. So his barn that he had his barrels in uh, burned down. And all of the barrels that he had left the casks because technically barrel is a unit of measurement. But anyway, they were all like charred and they're oaks. They don't burn very easily, but they were charred and he put them together and he put his moonshine in it and shipped them down the Mississippi to new Orleans. You know, back then transportation was took a little bit longer. And by the time the uh, moonshine had made it to new Orleans, it had this golden Brown color and it was bourbon. And that's literally how bourbon started. So now, is that yeah. metric barrels or the U.S. standard barrel? I have no idea. I'm, I'm, I know why I the rest of the world hates us. I guess. <laughs> uh, 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 yeah. Well, it's just part of being a human. It's like whoever conquers the world gets to decide. You know what weird oddities we have. You know and what the history was. Yeah. And what the history was. It's like the Romans, like they take over the world and they're like, y'all are going to wear togas and speak Latin. Next thing you know. <laughs> I think it would be the, the funniest thing. if like secret aliens do control our government and our world today. And they're like, you know what? We did the pyramids too. <laughs> We're taking that thing from you. <laughs> uh, they look at it and they're like, that's just this. cool as hell. How did they do that? We're going to say we did that. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, it's like it's like uh, you know we think we're good at colonization. Wait till the aliens show up. <laughs> cultural. Let me show you cultural appropriation. <laughs> All your I base are belong to us. If they were the, the the classic, you know, big head green aliens, but they all had pilgrim outfits. <laughs> that would be the greatest thing. They like invited us for dinner as part of some holiday before. <laughs> no, the the funny thing do. is like. You know, they're more technologically advanced, right? So that, so they come to Earth, and instead of stealing all our resources, you know, like, we're, we're so dumb, we think the aliens would do to us what we did to everybody else on Earth. You know, like, oh, they're going to come take our gold. Yeah, okay, buddy. Mm-hmm. No, they're stealing Hollywood. They go back to their planet, and they're like, I found this rap music. You won't believe it. It's freaking awesome. <laughs> their, their cultural appropriation is all, like, it, you know, uh, movies and, and uh, music and stuff like that. You know, like Drake is the first one abducted. They're like, well, I'm sorry, we're taking you to Planet Victon. Like, you have to come meet our leader. <laughs> I, I had a dream once where something similar essentially happened. Aliens integrated with society. Of course, they're technologically superior. But it was just as like, it was just subtly shitty enough for me to think it's a real life. Like, I'm in line at Dairy Queen, and if one of them walks in, they get to cut in line. <laughs> It's like the most mundane shit. They're like, you can have a green light, but if one of them's coming, you have to let them go. Speaking of Qatar, uh, all of my congratulations to Lionel Messi finally getting his World Cup trophy and Argentina. Uh, Well-deserved. What a fantastic finals game. Uh, You guys killed it. Congratulations. And to France, fourth uh, World Cup finals appearance and seven World Cups. You guys are doing good. I think Mbappe will get his trophy as well. So shout out to both teams. Congratulations. Sports, Jake, soccer. Jesus. All right. Are we done with that part? It's a thing. It happens every four years. Oh, my God. How do you not know what the World Cup is? (laughs) 
for our audio only listeners, we're wearing different shirts than we were previously because you have no context of when we record episode A or B. <laughs> but you video people will see the shirts and think, ah, here's a subtle cue. As if I am taking up your mental brain power that you are considering what I wore in a previous week. If there's a fan out there that is cataloging what I bring. <laughs> yeah, we are definitely not recording anything back to back. Just so you know, yeah. um, that doesn't happen. Yeah, it's fresh every week. So. Yeah, it's authentic. Nothing goes in a hopper. Nothing comes out six months later. And I have this newspaper here to prove it from November 12th, 2021. <laughs> Speaking of uh, dates and newspapers and stuff like that, have you seen Netflix's new uh, 1899 show? No, but since you texted me about it, it's on a list now. My favorite, before you tell me all about it, because you're going to tell me all about it, there's a side story you don't know. Uh one of my top comedians, Bo Burnham, in my life, he wrote a song about uh, what he's going to do when he FaceTimes with his mom. And I have been wanting, ever since I've heard this song, I've been wanting to do podcasting with John and just work all the lines into it. And one of the lines in the song is, he'll, she'll tell me all about the season six finale of The Blacklist. And like two <laughs> months later, this has been about a year ago now, but I hadn't given you the whole story. Uh, we were sitting there talking on the phone about Lord knows what, and you had mentioned the finale of it, and then my wife in the other room could hear it, and she just dies laughing because we had just watched that comedy special. <laughs> and I'm like, you have to do this song, so that's going to come out at some point. Yeah, so uh, it's hard to it's hard to like I don't want to give any spoilers, but 1899 is like all of the like. Matrix, Inception, movies like that. Like, it's totally 100% derivative. There is nothing new in it. There is nothing exciting. There is literally nothing where you'll be like, oh, this is new and different. But it's still a fucking awesome show. Like, it's it's just weird beyond belief and uh, kind of cool, you know? And I think, like, the, the coolest part about it is just the fact that somebody greenlit it. You know, because you're watching the show and you're like... There's nothing special about it. It's like one of those shows where, like, you think something is going to happen every second, and then nothing does. And then maybe one thing happens. You know, kind of like um, uh, Breaking Bad, you know, <laughs> slow burn or whatever. But you feel like at any moment all hell could break loose. You know, it just doesn't. And, but then it does, but it's, you know, really fast. And, and it's all derivative. Like, you won't watch any of it and be like, oh, that's an original thought, you know. But it's still cool. So I have, like I have kept this Monty Python, something from the Flying Circus, where uh, I forget what they're doing. Right? None of their stories really make a whole hill of beans, anyways. To a still image, and they go, and an epic battle took place of of wild proportions that could never be possibly illustrated on film. <laughs> 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 and I have abused that in every other story I have ever told. I was making a a terrible video game in my childhood, and I leveraged that about eight times in a row. No one else would think that that's funny. <laughs> but I enjoy it, and that's what matters. I don't know. Like their their humor is pretty good. Um, so it was like Saturday Night Live, like back in the eighties. It was freaking hilarious because it hadn't it, it had no point. You know what I mean? Like. They're, they're con I feel like SNL especially. Their comedy is so bodyguard. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like the comedy is so political and so strained now. You know that it's like gr it's kind of cringe to watch. You know, oh, another Trump impersonation. Good for you. Uh, but like uh, John Belushi, Samurai Deli. Like it has no point at all. It's just a guy with a samurai sword cutting off salami. You know, and 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 it's funny. It works. You know. Uh, Monty Python was the same way. Like half their skits, it's like they're so ridiculous. That's what makes them funny, you know. Lesson one on how not to be seen. It goes, yeah. that man is behind one of these three bushes, and they blow up all three. Of them. <laughs> <laughs> and he was his family in a cabin in the woods. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, oh man. Yeah, those were the those were the comedy days for sure. I'm pretty sure this parrot is dead. Oh <laughs> my god! He's just sleeping. <laughs> he gets it on the counter. <laughs> His feet are nailed <laughs> to the perch. 
Oh, I like I like the four guys sitting on stage talking about what it's like when they were a kid. Like there's 21 of us, and we lived in the bottom of a lake. And the other guy, <laughs> luxury. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The one upmanship, you know. That reminds me of uh, who's that other comedian? He did the uh, the moon buggy routine, you know. Uh, oh, 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 oh! I hate that I don't know this right off the top of my head. Uh, oh, it's gonna bother. Brian Regan is the guy. Brian here. Regan, yeah, Brian yeah. Regan. I just wish one time I was one of those astronauts that drove the moon buggy on the on the moon. You know, so when you have that one upman guy at the party, you can be like, "Oh, that reminds me of the time that I drove the moon rover on the Sea of Tranquility." <laughs> I come up with any story from that, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Story yeah. At all. I can one up anything. I was on the moon. Yeah. So we got into uh, helping businesses win, and you know, it's it, it's just cool, like how our stories came together, you know, and and the the friendship and partnership that we've had. And we share really similar motivations. And both of us are, I think, kind of like uh, open enough to admit that we are self-interested, but we're self-interested in, you know, helping others to win. Like that's that's how we make money, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, the evilest thing you can do, right, yeah, is support yeah. others for your own self-interest. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we're definitely capitalists, but uh, we're we're nice ones. Uh, so, uh, you know, I guess for me, like when we, when we talk about helping businesses, when one thing that, that kind of goes into that is as I was coming up and just figuring out life, you know, like as a young man, it's like, I didn't know anything, but I didn't know what I didn't know. Right. And I had people that took a bet on me, right. I had people that helped me out and sort of gave me a shot and stuff like that. And if it wasn't for those people, I, I don't know where I would be. You know, I might, I might not be successful. I might not be where I'm at or, or anything like that. And so there's an element of like paying it back, you know, the reciprocation theory that's going on here. Um, but it really, you know, makes me happy. Like I really enjoy seeing the light bulb click and seeing people be successful, you know, and, and make money, make more money for less effort. Um, what are your what are your feelings and thoughts on that, Jake? Well, I mean, it's been a little bit of a journey from, you know, just my self-interest to pick me because it pays a dollar more and I'll take it. And uh, <laughs> it's taken me longer to carefully craft the narrative where all of the places I had gotten better out of is because I had gotten somebody else to get even better out of. It has never been I stomped on somebody to get where I've got. That has never, that has right. never noted anything. I have right. been lucky in the same the same set of folks that, and thankfully, like all of them in the last ten years, all follow me on LinkedIn, so I could tag them in a post whenever I want to. But uh, yeah, a, a good set of people that either gave me permission when I was looking for it, right, or in times where I was asking why, there was somebody there to say why not. Mm -hmm. And now I've completely finally flipped and realized that everywhere I've had this false idea of risk or. Ask myself why I should. I need to ask why not. And if the uh, in statistics speak, just because I have to be nerdy enough about it, it's the healthiest respect for the null one could ever have. Your life yeah. is generally not interesting, right? So if I made a risky decision, what's the least interesting thing that could happen? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I guess for like for me in in my experience, um, one thing that uh, like I didn't have. You know, it kind of, I branched out on my own to the world. Like I was always hungry, right? And, you know, it it's probably a flaw. Like a psychologist would have a field day with me or whatever. But I just assumed whatever I turned my hand to, like I was going to be the CEO, right? I, I was going to be the guy. Um, I probably had a little bit more entrepreneurial motivation and spirit than succeeding in a large organization, you know, which CEO takes. Um, they're, they're slightly different skill sets, but, uh, you know, it, whether that's nature or nurture or whatever, I don't know. I don't pretend to know, but I always had it. So I never lacked confidence. Like I was always going to kill it. I was always going to win. I was always going to be the best. You know, I was very competitive still. Am. Um, but I didn't know anything, you know, I was fucking stupid, you know, and made a lot of blunders and, 
but there was always people there that uh, around me that would speak truth into my life. And that was the important thing. It was like, I had people that tried to get along with me and they weren't helpful. But the people that, uh, I guess, subordinated the, the fear of hurting my feelings to just telling me the truth, those are the ones that had an actual impact in my life. You know, yeah. like the folks who were willing to say, hey, you know what, Thackeray, you suck at this. You know, you blew, you blew that. You know, those are the ones that had the, the impact in my life. And then uh, I sort of uh, had this like awakening period where I realized that like my self-concept and others' concept didn't match, right? And that led to another uncomfortable sort of plateau in my personal development where I listened to everybody, right? And I didn't realize like there's bad actors out there and there's people that are full mm -hmm. of shit and they're ignorant people. I, I, I've, I've said it in our conversations a dozen times. I was given the feedback that you come in and you're too successful and that hurts other oh, people's yeah. feelings. Yeah. Why yeah. would I do that feedback? Would I just become a shittier person? No. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm. Yeah, it's you're. You're absolutely right. Like people are trying to use words to control and influence, and and sometimes the motivation, what the people are trying to accomplish, sucks. You know, uh, when you come in here and you're all successful, you make everyone else feel feel bad. Well, then try sucking less. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, so you know, and that led to like another plateau of growth. Where I'm like, wait a minute. Uh, not everybody's opinion is valid. Like there's a spectrum here. And then, you know, that kind of led to a, a learning path where I'm learning people and reading people and picking up on people and interpreting people and what's their motivation, you know, all of that. Um, and, and step by step, you know, I've gone on my personal, personal growth journey. And one thing that I've come across over and over is that uh, people have limited knowledge to make decisions and i think like that's probably the best if i had to encapsulate what it means to be a business leader right it's making decisions with limited information right if you just wanted to, to describe what do you do right what does the ceo do of a company mm -hmm. well there's a lot but one thing the ceo does is make decisions with limited information right and so it just brings me joy like when i can team up with a company or an individual that's trying to be more successful and they have some ideas, but they have limited knowledge that I can help them with. You know, I have a little bit more knowledge than they do. Um, it's, it's just fun, man. And you help people win and you see them I, go I out. I do specifically love about where we stuck our noses. I'll talk, I'll chat with somebody that's like, I've been doing this for 20 years. What could you possibly teach me? I was like, well, I've been doing 20 different things for one year. So there's a right. lot you've never seen. I yeah. Talk about. yeah. No, it's a, it's a great point. You know, um, I have that uh, uh, background, you know, partly being in 3PL, getting to work with a lot of different companies, you know, in a short time period. Um, mm -hmm. it, I learned lean with Honeywell, right? And they have an operating system that is kind of good enough that it's mentioned along with Toyota and a couple other companies. Like if you look up business operating system in Wikipedia, you know, it's one of just like three to five companies that are even mentioned in the just article. Just below Raytheon. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Um, and, you know, I, I thought I knew something. And I helped the site go silver. You know, they were bronze certified. I helped them go silver. I thought I knew something. And then I went to work for Bosch, you know, Robert Bosch. And they were doing all the same things with different names and, you know, different graphic design and different metrics. And just being able to do it two different ways immediately improved my understanding of what we were doing 100%. And I've taken all like the industrial engineering courses, like I've taken them all, you know, constrained optimization and blah, blah, blah. You know, I've, I've done that. But you just can't, at least I can't, you know, get real knowledge through theory. I can, I can read the book and do the math problems. That's yeah, totally different from running a plan, right? Yeah, I think uh, marriage has taught me any, a little more of that than anything. Yeah, no, <laughs> a mixed absolutely. model, constraint optimization. Here's one of nine ways she could be when I get home. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's a great metaphor, right? Because um, 
you know, those of us that, have, that are married have probably read marriage books at some point, right? And heard somebody else's opinion about marriage. And we know like half the time it doesn't work, you know, like it just doesn't apply to our situation. And we don't hold it against those people, right? Like we'll, we'll read a marriage book that says like, whatever, you know, give your, give your spouse a massage in the tub once a month and you'll have a great marriage, you know? And we're like, my spouse doesn't even like to be touched. You know, this obviously doesn't apply, but we, we cut them a break because we just inherently realize like, this is a very personal intimate thing that you can't possibly cover every aspect with a book. No, I'm I can't just, imagine I'm my it. wife reading that and thinking, holy crap, how do I get Jake in a tub? <laughs> <laughs> like the right. physics she has to work <laughs> Yeah, they keep making them smaller and smaller, too. Uh, either that or I'm getting bigger and bigger. You know, I'm the only people who never met me in person. I'm six foot 11, 420 pounds. <laughs> yes, Jake Jake is um, Samoan, actually. He's ginormous. Um, yeah, so, um, but then... But then we'll read like leadership books and we don't apply the same like intelligence to them. You know, that, oh, this guy says this, I should try this. You know, and it's like, well, wait a minute, slow your roll. Like, have you ever led anything before? You know, this might not apply here. Um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, uh, and I'm going to release my fat for saying this out loud, but it is the Red Lobster Cheddar Baked Biscuits. Are there other biscuits in the world? Absolutely. And you should be discerning about which ones you let into your life. Are those freaking delicious, though? Yes, they are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm hungry now. Oh. Yeah, I, I uh, one, one time in my middle management days, attended a class on timekeeping. And I thought, first off, it meant so much to me that somebody out loud said, you know what, let's have an actual class about helping people stay accountable to their time. And I told a class of people, about 15 folks on a Zoom call, that one of the things I do is I pick the hardest thing I need to do in the morning. I set out a bag of Cheetos, crunchy, and I can't eat the Cheetos until the thing is done. And this is a true thing about Jake. It's something I've done for a while. And nobody related to that at all. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's just a couple of guys like, you fat weirdo. <laughs> I thought it was such a gripping, like, raw moment for me. Yeah, and nobody, yeah. <laughs> nobody cared about it in the slightest. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, I mean, sometimes it works out like that. Despite the fact that, you know, the story you relate has strong roots, you know, in psychology. You know, the, the self-reward thing. Like, you can read whole books that tell you to do that or whatever. It might not mention Crunchy Cheetos, but, uh, you know, uh, yeah, it's it's really good advice. But, yeah, totally. Like, it's contextual and stuff like that. It depends on a lot of different stuff. Um, and that's why, you know, like consulting and consultants are so important is everything is contextual. You know, you ask a like lean operations management specialist the answer to a question. And if they don't say it depends, then they don't know what they're talking about. Yeah, you know? Like any good philosopher. Uh, yeah, exactly. I, I the big one for me that I found really, really in the last two years is like, especially for the guys that are just looking for permission, their organization won't give them. The consultant can just do that. Just have that honest conversation. Like, look, guy, I already know what needs to change. It's ABCD. I just need someone else to give them permission that they'll listen to. And then I come in, I spend 30 minutes on site. I rattle off something somebody else prepared for me, and I take the boys out for drinks. <laughs> and everybody's happier for it. Everybody. Oh, there you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, you know, helping uh, helping people win, a big motivator. You know, I love it. I like to win, and I like to see other people win, you know. Um, and, and just the, the fulfillment that you get from, like, hey, this person was doing this and getting this, you know. And then I was able to help them, and they're doing the same amount of stuff, just different. And now they're getting this. You know, more of what I want, less of what I don't want, but the least possible ever. Uh, that's awesome. It's really fulfilling, and and I enjoy it. Um, so that's a little bit about my, you know, journey. Yeah, I think for me, uh, and you know, I've got a very slanted view from what most will say, but as I talk to more and more consultants, and I have the brand, some might be familiar with on LinkedIn. None of us are that different, right? We all have yeah. our specific, and just like you said, in 3PL, work with multiple different companies. As soon as you work for two, you'll see how drastically different they are and how much they're the same. 
right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're dealing with a lot of the same human problems, a lot of the same math problems too. But, you know, I, I, I guess in my experience, like the, the barriers to success are rarely objective. Yeah, they're all and, really small. Yeah, like... <laughs> <laughs> You're not getting to a video without that conversation. <laughs> uh, yeah. How to misunderstand math 101. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, but, you know, like, I don't work with a lot of companies where the barrier to success is physical. It's very rare. It's almost always like mental, psychological, knowledge based. I lack the knowledge, I lack the, you know, I have too much fear. I don't know enough to, mm -hmm. I can't assess the risk of what it's like to change. I don't know how to change, right? It's, it's almost all up here in what we do. Once you get past that hurdle, like the availability of information is, is so vast in our world. You know, there is no super secret knowledge. Like if you come oh. across a lean consultant who pretends that they know something everybody else does, doesn't know, um, they're they're probably like that's probably a brand they've created to try to sell stuff it's just not true right um instead what you'll have is you know like a, a good consultant knows the difference between reality and bullshit you know it's like if you're if you need a financial consultant you can find everything you need to know about how the u.s dollar works and how to be successful with money online the problem is you have to sift, sift through the other 99 percent bullshit to get to get the the reality right mm -hmm. um, make it and do not spend it yeah, i didn't yeah. think i had to write that down <laughs> yeah. spend less than you make actually i like the flip side there i like make more than you spend that, that, that's the way that i like to frame it you know uh, but um you know uh we don't know what we don't know and so when there's some idiot online who's telling you like oh you don't have to have a credit score you can still be successful in life and and pay cash for everything and you'll be awesome yeah, you're going to die poor. You know, that, that will literally never work based on how the U.S. economy is designed and any other nation with a central banking system, fractional reserve banking system. Yeah, but how I mean, do you know even that Even if you survive and are happy, right, you, you are not nearly as far as you would have been. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. But how do you know that's bullshit? Right? And that's where, to me, that's where good consultants come in is they're able to educate and help people separate from – you know, like there's so much crap out there. What do you listen to and what do you not listen to? Right. Um, and so that's not super secret knowledge, but it is a, a gravity of uh, profound knowledge that uh, you can share with others that they might not have through lack of experience or, or what have you. It's a little deep there. I, uh, man, I also want the audience to listen to me. <laughs> Right? But God, get your information from anywhere, right? Only choose me because I'm funny and bring you some sort of entertainment to give you something you could just as easily have Googled. There is nothing I will sell you or ever offer to you you could not get it yourself. I yeah, might totally. get you relax and go, yeah, we should do that. And then, you know, do the thing you were already thinking about. But that's all I've ever done. That is all I have ever done. Right. But I mean, that's kind of like, that's our brand, kind of, right? Like our MO is like, we're the curators. Like we sift through all the crap so you don't have to. You know, any any product or service or whatever that John and Jake bring up is going to help you get more of what you want and less of what you don't want for the least possible effort. Right? That like that's what we do. So, and I think helpful consultants, all of them, fall into the similar bucket. Like, you know, I I'm not going to pretend that I have super secret knowledge that's not on the internet. That's bullshit. It's just there's so much crap on the internet. How do you know what's valid? That's our role, really. And, and, you know, my encouragement to other consultants out there would be like, that's your actual role. If you roll up into a company and you're like, hey, let me teach you about lean. Good luck, dude. Do you know what you're competing with? Literally the entire internet, you know? So you're using like this language of lean and stuff like that. And meanwhile, the guy that you're trying to sell to just goes off and Googles it and is like, ha ha, you're wrong. The first three results say you're wrong, you know? As opposed to selling yourself as, well, I've actually done it. Here's my credentials, right? Here's what I've done. Here's the millions I've made. Here's the companies that I've worked with. Here's what I learned. And I can help you apply theory effectively in your situation to get outcomes, right? That is the name of the game. That's what makes me wake up in the morning. 
That and pamplemi. Have you ever seen that flavor before? Pamplemi. Pamplemi. Uh, I prefer the. Um, or it's pimple mousse. It, uh, it's one or the other. <laughs> I prefer the what is it? Limon cello. The limon cello. <laughs> yes, that's my favorite flavor. Uh, Harry Potter forever took me out of the world. When in the second, the second uh, chamber of secrets, they go and hit Dumbledore's little secret elevator or whatever, and he goes sherbet limon. I'm like, did you just say lemon sherbet? Did you really? <laughs> the password is a lemon sherbet. I am completely removed from this world. <laughs> Now I heard this one comedian, and he was saying like, uh, "Harry Potter is actually a kind of a crappy story because she just ripped off Star Wars." You know, I'm like, "Oh, well, well, hold on, buddy. You know, your your uh, uh, bearded uh, mysterious uncle drops you, or 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 what a friend drops you off to live with your aunt and your uncle. You get raised not knowing who you really are. Later on, the the scruffy guy with the beard comes back for you and takes you to this magical land where you learn magic." And then, you know, there's this airheaded wizard that teaches you the ways of the force or whatever. And uh, the lightsabers are shittier in Harry Potter. But other than that, they're basically the same story. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> yeah, that is that, that, that's the that's a heavily influenced off of religion. If you just add lightsabers and actual cool parts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like at, at some deep level as humans. We don't have a lot of stories left to tell. I'm pretty yeah, sure. We only have <laughs> three, know? and we just keep rattling them off forever in different flavors. Oh yeah, yeah. What were we talking about? 1899 on Netflix. Yeah, it's like <laughs> yes. you're watching and you're like, oh, that's from Inception, you know. But you still watch it because it's it's kind of good. But, uh, because it's the 20th show you have in your life. You know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's be well, honest. We're, we're not <laughs> watching Netflix because we're happy. <laughs> right. Well, this is what's next on my watch list. So I'm fucking watching it. Get out of my way. <laughs> yeah. oh, first world problem. Yeah, I mean, well, uh, I was talking to my my buddy. We were at the cigar lounge, and I'm like, "We're in the cigar lounge. We're I'm literally burning fourteen dollars right now while sipping coffee that costs twenty three dollars a pound while we're watching the World Cup live that's happening in Qatar." on a big screen TV, like hashtag first world problems. Like if I bitch about anything right now, uh, I'm in the wrong. <laughs> you know? like, just imagine like the people who their orders wrong, pulling out of McDonald's, like, how perfect is the rest of your life? <laughs> right? This is the straw that broke the camel's back, right? Like what golden bed did you get out of it before right. masseuses took care of you and put you into the car to escort you to this McDonald's where the right. order being wrong is the roughest thing going on? Uh, yeah and and it's not even like wrong wrong it's like they gave me a medium fries instead of a large fries how dare they you know? yeah. like, the mustard's uh, too tangy yeah, yeah yeah oh man yeah we're we're spoiled rotten for sure um well look i appreciate the time today and uh for all of our listeners out there in uh youtube land or wherever you consume your fine podcast content thanks for joining us today on a quality podcast uh, we are here to serve you and help you be better at whatever you do for less effort. So give us a shout. Uh, you can reach us at the links below, or you can head to zoomopx.com and uh, drop us a line. There's a contact us page there. See a little bit about what we do. If you have questions, you can reach both of us on LinkedIn or the website, and uh, we'd be happy to help you. Alternatively, start a war, man. Post a, post a meme on LinkedIn and say you're better at it than me. That'll get a couple of laughs back and forth. <laughs> Yes, any attention is good attention. Yes, Thanks, all everybody. news is good news, except for that guy I killed. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Thanks for joining.